HMS Exeter would be the last heavy cruiser built for the Royal Navy. Technically part of the two-ship York class, she was built a couple of years after work started on the name ship, and so she could be considered a half-sister. The most obvious differences were that her masts and funnels were straight, and her forward superstructure was bulkier but somewhat shorter. More subtle was the fact that she was also a foot wider, amongst other changes. Laid down in summer 1928, launched just under a year later and commissioned two years after that, she would spend most of her pre-war career on foreign stations, as per her intended design role, during which time small additions to her armour and anti-aircraft armament were made. When war broke out in 1939, she was assigned to Force G to track down the German heavy cruiser Graf Spee. This force was originally formed of Exeter herself, the Leander-class light cruisers Ajax and Achilles, plus the county-class heavy cruiser HMS Cumberland. As luck would have it, the only full-size cruiser, Cumberland, was undergoing a minor refit in the Falklands when the rest of the force, which was now made up entirely of diminutives, managed to track down the German ship at the Battle of the River Plate. Splitting up as per the plan, Exeter took one flank alone, and soon began to pay the price of being the primary focus of her opponent. Hits and near misses from 11-inch shells rapidly wiped out half her torpedo crews, her spotting aircraft, which was about to launch, most of the communication system, and then also her super-firing forward turret. The blast and shrapnel from that particular hit also killed most of those who were on the bridge, prompting the survivors to relocate to the backup control position aft, at which point further hits wiped out those communication systems as well. Also the remaining forward turret and some of the ship's fort watertight integrity. Her machinery, though, was intact, and a human chain from the aft control position was formed to yell instructions down to the steering flat. With only her aft turret still in action, and all main fire control systems having now also been taken out, the level of human-only control was joined by an officer who climbed onto the roof of the turret and started correcting the gun's fire by eye with a pair of binoculars. Remarkably, this process worked, and one of Exeter's 8-inch shells scored the critical hit that would leave Grash Bay unable to process fuel and thus eliminate any possibility of her making it home. Although slowly flooding, Exeter kept up her pursuit until a splash from a near miss sent water through a pre-existing shell hole, which shorted out power to the aft turret. Now completely disarmed, Exeter resolved to try ramming Graf Bay next, but then the turret came back online and so she kept up what resistance she could with her remaining gun, until flooding disabled the main turret again and also dropped speed below 18 knots, at which point she was ordered to withdraw. Somewhat battered, Exeter needed just over a year of repairs and modernisation before she was ready to sail again. This would give her a mini Queen Anne's Mansion style bridge, tripod masts, new radar systems including fire control radar, as well as doubling her heavy anti-aircraft battery by replacing all of the single 4-inch guns with twin mountings, plus new lighter anti-aircraft weapons as well as mounting points for even more. She rejoined the fleet in March 1941, but critically, during this time, her experienced crew had mostly been reallocated to other duties, in, and so she would sail with a relatively green complement, initially on convoy escort duty, but by summer 1941 she had been assigned to the Far East. Her luck seemed to hold here. She missed sailing with the doomed Force Z by less than 24 hours, and then, once assigned to ABDA command, she was attacked no less than five times in a single day by massed formations of Japanese bombers. But she survived with nothing worse than shock and shrapnel damage to her Walrus Scout aircraft. But her luck would run out in February 1942 at the first and second battles of the Java Sea. In the first engagement, it actually seemed like she would continue to live a charmed life. She took a hit from a long lance torpedo, but the torpedo failed to explode. But then an 8-inch shell from the Japanese cruiser Haguro knocked out a boiler room, crippling the ship and forcing it to withdraw. And despite having fire control radar now, the inexperienced crew were unable to put in the kind of gunnery performance the ship had shown against Graf Spee, and the Haguro managed to escape unscathed. The next day, having patched up some of the boilers and now trying to make it back to safety, 
Exeter and her escorts ran into four Japanese heavy cruisers, including Haguro, as well as escorts. Another shell came in, and this time it knocked out the other boiler room. The effects of that hit also cutting power generally to the ship, leaving it adrift and unable to work the guns. Realising that the situation was now pretty hopeless, the order was given to scuttle the ship, and she began listing to port as she settled. Seeing the British cruiser immobilised, the Japanese Navy helped the process along with a pair of torpedoes – these ones did explode – which caused the ship to roll back the other way, eventually sinking with a list to starboard. The ship would settle in 200 feet of water, remaining in place until her rediscovery in 2007. Unfortunately, as with a number of Allied wrecks in the area, a follow-up expedition in 2016 found that grave robbers had destroyed the wreck in the course of illegal looting of the ship for its metal. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.